We interrupt this regularly scheduled marathon training vlog to bring you this special Spindat presentation. I've been mountain biking now for the better part of 12 years. Some years were definitely better than others, but in that time, I've had the opportunity to ride all sorts of different trails in different parts of the world, and because I'm lucky enough to be a bicycle influencer, do some of that riding on some pretty friggin' sick bikes as well. Now, over this past more than a decade, and especially in the last two years, and it makes me wildly uncomfortable to say, I have improved and progressed drastically in my mountain biking abilities. And I wouldn't blame you for expecting that the bikes I own and ride to have followed suit in that progression, climbing inconceivably in price and just dripping with tech. But this hardtail that you just saw in a bunch of clips of this intro and that I have been riding for the last year is $699 on Poseidon's website right now. My full suspension trail bike is simply the result of buying little upgrades and repairs over the last 12 years from my first ever mountain bike. This quick release seat post clamp is actually from my 2013 felt compulsion. <laughs> Some of the parts that you see on here were on my felt compulsion and I eventually ordered a $590 custom frame to replace the old worn out aluminum felt compulsion frame. And it, Mr. Relatable, continues to be an Eric's budget friendly evolution of that build to this day. My cross country build, I literally resurrected from what could have been garbage. I just wanted to start doing cross country marathons again. There's no way I was buying a full bike. Actually, there's no way I was buying anything. And heck, even my e-bike, which technically is not mine, is nowhere near the top of the line one you can get. It's more or less agreed upon as one of the best value e-bikes you can get on the market today. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, cool. Why are you telling us this? Well, it's definitely not to try and sit here and convince you that a lower cost and entry level budget friendly bike is as good as like a top of the most expensive bike because they're not. They just plain and simple are not as good. But what I do want to try and convince you of is Maybe that doesn't matter for like a lot of us. Allow me, if you will, to just draw up a bit of a scenario. This is actually something that happens every so often. So I'll get a message from a friend, for example, who wants to get into mountain biking. They'll forward along a link to, of course, a dual suspension mountain bike because every new rider interested in riding wants a dual suspension first and foremost. And because of course it's a good price, it's typically a Polygon Siskiyou like T6. And I'll ask, is this a good bike? Is it appropriate? Would it be capable enough for around here? You know, what do you think? So I generally reply, well, that's a nicer bike than my dual suspension. So you're good there. And I've ridden all of the trails that our part of the world has to offer and more on this hardtail stock and over the upgrades that I've done to it. So yes, that bike you've sent me is going to, is absolutely appropriate, totally capable. Honestly, I'd be happy to ride it. And then they don't buy it. Mm -hmm. They don't buy it. <laughs> and a year later, we go through the motions again. So I asked, what's the deal? Why didn't you just get it last year? You're asking about it again. I'm telling you it's fine. And the response is, I just want to make sure that it's going to be something that's good enough that I'm going to be able to ride everywhere with you guys. I ride this. Ride this everywhere. All our trails. I ride this on. Happily. You haven't even tried mountain biking yet. Tried some flow trails. Anything on a bike yet to see if you like it. And you're concerned that whatever you get isn't gonna be good enough for like a Mount St. Anne downhill race run. <laughs> and just like that, another year gone by not starting mountain biking. And I don't know, maybe I completely underestimate just how powerful mountain bike marketing and social media mountain bike content truly is at uh, driving people's decisions on what they think they need to even begin starting mountain biking. But personally, for me, I, uh, I much prefer the idea of having any mountain bike at all to get on the trails with and just start doing it with. So that's exactly what I do. Every bike and build that I own is well within my means 
but it works good enough for all the riding that I do with them. And anytime I'm riding in a group or with other people, there's nothing about the performance of the entry level or mid level parts that are on my bikes that are holding me back. It's almost always guaranteed to be my skills or my fitness as a mountain biker. I would almost argue that even after 12 years of mountain biking, I'm not good enough of a rider to maximize the performance potential of the parts that are on these bikes anyway. And I don't ever let the fact that none of these have any top shelf parts on them be the thing that keeps me from wanting to go ride. Because if I did, like my friend who keeps sending me a link to a bike with absolutely acceptable levels of performance for the trails around here, I may not have ever started either. Just buy the bike, man, come on. This one, this one that I ride $699 right now. The one you're looking at is way better. It's gonna be fine. Yes, I did make this entire video to try and convince my friend to start mountain biking. He's been talking about it for three years.